3710 Coulter Drill Pivot Arm Bearing Upgrade Kit. Borgo 3710 Independent Coulter Drills, built prior to 2014 model year, were equipped with composite fiber pivot arm bushings. It has been found that extended service in challenging conditions resulted in enough wear that the pivot arm bushings in four locations may need replacing. Worn pivot arm bushings and pins may result in performance issues. Gradual reduction of the working angle may cause plugged or worn scrapers, reduce penetration and seed placement concerns. Worn pivot arm bushings that are left too long may result in the pivot arms becoming worn and damaged beyond repair. Bourgo is offering a retrofit kit that can be purchased when replacement of the pivot arm bushings are required. The retrofit kit changes out the old pins and bushings to a new greasable pin with bearings and seals. This new pin assembly will have a much longer service life even in challenging seating conditions. This video will provide step-by-step -step instructions for the removal of the old bushings and installation of the new bearings. You will first need to inspect the amount of side-to-side -side deflection that is present on the 3710 seating arms. Before measuring this deflection, check that all the plastic shims are still in place for all four pins. The loss of these shims may result in excessive deflection of the seating arm even without wear of the bushings. Run a measuring tape from the neighboring coulter over to the coulter arm that you wish to measure. With the tape directly over top of the hub, check to see that there is no more than 3 8 to 7 16 of total deflection. If the arm deflects more than this, the bushings should be replaced. Contact your local Borgo dealer to order the components needed to perform the update. The dealer will need to refer to Technical Service Bulletin 33 2014. You will require one needle bearing retrofit kit number 9313-88 for each pin or four kits per opener. For example, a 60-foot, 10-inch space 3710 will require 288 kits to change out all of the arms. You will also require to order a bearing installation sleeve, part number 9313-88-25, and a revised maintenance deco, part number 3905-09-01. The following are recommended shop tools required for the installation of the retrofit kit. A heavy duty cordless impact drill, high impact sockets with extension, a non-marring hammer, a one inch diameter assembly bullet, penetration oil, a pneumatic inline drill, a grinding flap wheel one inch diameter, a shock blow gun, safety glasses, and a dust mask. Prior to working on the drill, position it in a clean and safe work area. Ensure that the drill is properly secured and blocked to prevent any movement or sudden loss of hydraulic pressure. Next, lower all the openers to the ground. Release oil pressure by using the tractor remote, not the drill control box. If possible, Spray the pins liberally with a penetrating oil one day prior to performing the update. Next, remove the pin on the rod end of the cylinder and flip it up out of the way. Flipping the cylinder up will get it out of the way without unhooking the hydraulic lines. For this example, we will remove the cylinder. If you are planning to strip the entire unit prior to upgrading the arms, it may be beneficial to start at the middle of the drill, starting with the back row. Make sure to keep all of the components grouped by each arm assembly during the retrofit process. Mixing of parts during reassembly may result in having to spend extra time adjusting cleaner and packer wheel settings after your reassembly is done. You can remove the packer wheel and cleaner wheel to make the walking assembly lighter 
but this will create more work and possible loss of shims used to position both of the wheels. Remove and set aside the depth adjustment pin and walking axle link pin and retainer clips. Next, use the impact with a 1 and 1 8 socket to remove the nut on the depth adjustment hinge pin. Take care not to damage the threads when removing this pin. Use the 1 inch diameter assembly bullet when removing the pin. Your drill may have older spacing clips which have a larger opening and may release from the pin during field operation. New clips with a tighter opening are provided for reinstallation. Use the impact drill with a 1516 socket to remove the nut holding the scraper assembly in place. Next, use the impact with a 1 and 1 8 socket to remove the nut holding the Coulter hub in place. Again, please remember to group the cleaner packer wheel assembly, scraper assembly, and Coulter assembly together for reinstallation on the same upright. Use the impact with a 1 and 1 8 socket to remove the nuts from the four pins holding the cast body and parallel arms. These old pins will be replaced by the new greasable pins. Use a press and properly sized die to press out the old bushings from each of the parallel arms and the cast body. Do not remove the two front bushings of the cast body. After the bushing is removed, clean out the hole with the flapper grinder wheel. Be careful not to remove too much material when cleaning out the holes. Flip the parallel arm over and clean out the clevis end as well. Check the clevis end for fit with a new parallel arm pin. It is critical to ensure that bearings fit properly into the housing. A bearing that can be slid in and out or spun by hand in the housing will be subject to spinning or migration of the bearing during operation creating a high probability of failure. If this is the case, one option is to use a locking compound to secure the bearing. Ensure the recommended set time is allowed prior to installing the pivot pin. A second option is to apply scribe lines to the housing to create an even set of ridges resulting in a press fit that will secure the bearing in the housing. Ensure that the edge of the bearing with the lettering is facing to the outside of the castings. It is recommended to use the insertion sleeve to press the bearings to the proper depth. Insert the plastic spacer between the two bearings prior to pressing them into place. If you have received a third bearing in your update kit, use the bearing in place of the spacer. Use the same process for both parallel arms and the cast body. Insert the flat face of the seal towards the bearing. Take care not to damage the seal. Use a non-marring hammer for installation. Repeat the procedure on the opposite side of the cast body. Install the bottom parallel arm casting to the mount. Check that the grease zerk is secure in the pin. Position the locking head of the pin over the tab on the mount. Insert the plastic shims on the pin between the arm and the mount. Use the new style plastic shims as shown in the example. Next, install the top parallel arm casting to the mount. Again, check that the grease zerk is secured in the pin. Use the new style plastic shims. Discard any old style shims. Now you can install the cast body onto the arms. 
It is recommended to use the 1 inch assembly bullet to guide the pin into position. Once the arms are pinned, check that the arm assembly moves up and down freely and doesn't bind. Mount the Zerk shields over the two bottom pivot pins. Secure all four pivot pins with 3 quarter inch flat washers and 3 quarter inch nuts. Torque up to 70 foot pounds. Repin the hydraulic cylinder into position. Install the coulter assembly back onto the cast body. There are two flat edges on the coulter hub that match up with the seat on the cast body. Secure the coulter hub with a washer and 3 quarter inch nut. Torque to 150 foot pounds. Place the cleaner packer wheel assembly into position. We use the old pin to secure. Secure the pin with the existing nut, washer and shims. Torque to 70 foot pounds. Replace the depth adjustment pin and walking axle link pin. Secure these back in place with their original clips. Replace the scraper assembly on the cast body. Check that the carriage bolt is seated properly in the adjustment slot. When positioning the low disturbance scraper on the disc, check that the corner of the low disturbance scraper is 3 quarters to 1 inch from the edge of the folder. When positioning a disc wing scraper, check that the corner of the scraper is one to one and a quarter inches from the edge of the coulter. Once you're satisfied with the position of the scraper, torque to 120 to 135 foot pounds. Check that the cleaner wheel runs along the edge of the coulter with enough contact to clean it, but not so much to prevent it from turning. You should also check that the edge of the scraper is in even contact with the coulter and that there is no excessive tension onto the coulter. Refer to the operator's manual for detailed information on how to adjust the position of the scraper onto the coulter. Grease each of the pins until you see grease emerging from between the arm and the clevis. Afterwards, grease at every 250 hour intervals. There are a few last minute items to finish before the retrofit is complete. Remember to apply the new general maintenance decal over top of your old existing decal. Perform a close inspection of all the work that you've done and check the torques on all of the nuts after the first five hours of operation. Follow the guidelines for maintenance and service that are shown on the maintenance decal and in the operator's manual. Refer to the detailed instructions in the operator's manual for adjusting the scraper, the cleaning wheel, and packer wheel when required. Follow all safety precautions during maintenance and operation of your 3710 Coulter drill. For more information on this and other Borgo products, please go to our website at www.borgo.com.